while we're waiting for open guns at the government, has anyone um, tried in cryptocurrency before? No, I haven't. Um, I think I will need some time to study it. But for other coin like RS coin before, uh, last year a friend of mine asked me to uh, connect to a, a chat line and he introduced the RS coin. So I think it's quite interesting. So I signed up and give some like 100 coins, 100 coins, some coins for free. And I need some time to study it. And I think this is the future of, of the money that we should mm -hmm. consider. Do you trade uh, uh, cryptocurrency, Kunina? Um, I'm still studying. That's why I'm looking forward to this um, interview, basically, because I would love to um, gather more information and knowledge about that. So, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, one That's friend of mine. I didn't trade in any cryptocurrency also, but one friend of mine, that she's like trading every day and she got like sometime like 300,000 per month from the Bitcoin 300, also. Mm -hmm. So how much in US dollar, <laughs> by the way. Anyway, anyway, but yeah, she about to quit her job very soon after no she's way. trading. I know, right? It's a crazy idea, but she 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 been trading this for long, or just trading um, it? Around two years already. Two years. Yes, she confident enough, and she feel like, hey, why not? Why why people not trading cryptocurrency right now? She's the one who keep persuade me to do a cryptocurrency trading. I always say no for that because like I'm quite scared, and I. I saw her all of day. She keep like watching the screen all the whole <laughs> time, and she enjoy quite enjoy about it because like the cryptocurrency trading right mm -hmm. now is quite like it's like a game. Some mm -hmm. platform they have like the option like a game like a, the previous game that we used to play when we were very young. So she said like it's very fun. Let's do it, Pink. Let's do it, Pink. May and maybe Kun Pink, we should invite your friend to teach us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, three hundred thousand baht per month is not little, and it's not funny. It's quite serious, and she. That's why I told you that she about to quit her job soon for play for trading. So I'm not sure that is a good idea or not. But a lot of Thai people already did that. So Kun Gon with us right now. So the speaker is with us right now. Please welcome Kun Gon Jatikawanit, Club Party leader and a former finance minister of Thailand. So Adika Kun Gon. Hi. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I will I would like to tell you that I'm so excited <laughs> to talk to you. This is the very I, first I was time that to your I meet you. I was listening to your conversation. Do not yes. quit your day job. To trade oh, really? <laughs> this is a recommendation now <laughs> why because it's not a real job it's uh you can invest um and uh but to spend all day looking at that screen is not gonna make you rich um uh or fulfilling you need a job mm. and um you can invest in cryptocurrency without having to leave your job yeah. i see we mentioned right. about cryptocurrency trading, uh, cryptocurrency tax earlier. And yeah, um, I made a, yeah. I, I posed uh, my comments this morning actually about that. Wow, can't wait. Before we go into talk about like digital transformation in Thailand, let's talk about that hot <laughs> issue first of cryptocurrency tax. What do you think about this policy you can go on? Well, actually, um, in short, I don't think the revenue department uh, has worked out all the details uh, sufficiently for them to actually uh, launch this tax. Um, and I think there's a lot of issues that needs to be clarified. Uh, another issue that people don't talk about, but is a real potential problem is uh, the VAT. Uh, the um, revenue department actually levied VAT on cryptocurrencies, which if you think about it, uh, implies that they they look at cryptocurrencies as a as a product uh, rather than as a currency. Mm -hmm. And not every country does this. In fact, most countries have changed the laws to take cryptocurrency out of the VAT system. Uh, 
but for Thailand, VAT is still levied on cryptocurrency investment. Now, what does this mean? It means that if you were to sell something to somebody, let's say, uh, I don't know, something you make, and um, because that's a, a sale of a good, uh, you need, you, you're charged VAT on that. And then let's say you, you receive payment with crypto rather than with fiat currency. When you sell that crypto, crypto and exchange it to bar you have to pay VAT again so you're effectively paying VAT twice uh, mm -hmm. on on um, your business transaction uh, which I don't think well it needs to be uh, carefully thought through as to uh, whether that is actually correct um, because that's more detrimental uh, to uh, cryptocurrency trading in fact than capital gains tax potentially and for capital gains, the question you need to ask is, why, why is it that we do not charge capital gain for investment in stocks and shares, mm -hmm. but we uh, decide to, cha uh, to charge um, capital gains on cryptocurrency? Why? I mean, there are differences, but I think the revenue department needs to explain what their view is of the difference. The so other issue is, the other issue, uh, most important issue really uh, is, most countries that levy capital gains tax on cryptocurrencies. Now, some countries charge capital gain tax, many countries do not. Uh, the countries that do charge capital gain tax almost invariably charge a tax on the difference between profit and loss. But the Thai Revenue Department has indicated that they were, uh, they're intending to charge 15% on every profit without being able to credit your losses against that, which if you're a trader, uh, is you'd understand doesn't really make sense you know today mm. you might lose tomorrow you gain um in in totality you haven't actually made money and yet you happen to pay 15 percent on every time you, you you make a gain that doesn't make sense so i think these uh details need to be ironed out before they even uh, think about levying this tax so what is the worst scenario if the government continue this policy the worst scenario is, I guess, uh, everybody quits uh, on crypto in Thailand, and um, and those that don't quit uh, uh, trade from an overseas exchange, and uh, that would make it impossible uh, or very difficult for the local tax authorities to uh, collect uh, that intended tax. So the government gains nothing. Uh, the uh, the the local uh, crypto community loses everything. Um, we stunt the growth and development of local exchanges like BitCup. Um, and I, I don't think that's a positive uh, for, for Thailand. I read in the news right now the reason that government try to collect the tax from cryptocurrency traders because of this, they saw crypto as an asset, right? And the only one way yeah. is fix the law that it could happen. Could it happen? The only, um, oh, easily, uh, you know, laws are written difficult. by men. <laughs> well, laws are written by men. They can be changed by men. That's what MPs in parliament are there for, uh, is to consider the appropriateness of each and every law. Uh, so that is, it cannot possibly be the excuse um, from, you know, making, making wrongs right. That's their job. So it's not difficult. Uh, Okay, let's move to the topic about digital transformation. I have right. heard a lot of your like, speech about the digital transformation earlier. So what should hmm. Thailand embrace and be prepared for this transformation? Everything. And my, my opinion is, uh, you know, in fact, you know, my voice to the nation really is that Thailand needs total uh, techn technological transformation. Um, we are at the cusp of significant changes uh, that is taking place around us, many challenges and opportunities, uh, and all of which requires us taking very seriously the issue of uh, te te technology uh, and, and transformation that, that is required. Uh, for example, um, te technological changes around us cannot be ignored. It's already having an impact on pretty much everything we do. Uh, so unless and until uh, we transform into a technologically driven uh, country and economy, uh, we're going to fall behind. 
there are also other uh, pain points or, or issues um, that, uh, that we face, uh, many of which uh, will be addressed uh, by uh, technology. For example, uh, as we all know, we're in the midst of uh, aging society. Uh, aging society has many implications, uh, one of which, of course, is potential labor shortages. Uh, so unless industry embraces technological changes, uh, we're not going to be able to find answers uh, to the challenge, for example, of aging society. There are issues also of uh, the environment, uh, the fact that we, we need clean energy, uh, the fact that uh, we need means and ways of uh, growing crops without having to burn fields, uh, all of these. Uh, will be ad addressed uh, or can be addressed uh, by technology, um, technological uh, use of uh, use of technology by farmers, for example, will require uh, fewer uh, labor in the fields, which means that they will uh, they will not they can find alternatives other than uh, to burn their fields uh, in order to replant. Uh, th these are these are examples of what I mean. Even pain points, including issues related to corruption. Uh, corruption occurs because of uh, lack of transparency in process, especially the bureaucratic process. So imagine if you have GovTech, government technology, and you completely transform the bureaucracy into what I call one-click government, i.e. you're able to access every service, uh, apply for every license uh, digitally through your telephone without having to seek signatures from various numbers of government officials or along the way clearly that adds transparency clearly that adds efficiency uh, and um, and clearly that 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 also um adds accountability uh, all of these uh, will lead to significant reduction in a very significant pain point of Thai society which is corruption i see good gone in your opinion you, do you see that digital transformation or digital economy will be the next uh, like driven engine for the Thai economy? Because we are always the yeah, user yeah, yeah, of technology. Yeah. That's right. Uh, some countries call it the uh, uh, green economy, uh, for example, or, or the green dividend. Uh, these are, uh, these re refer to uh, e the economic impact of, of transformation. Um, so, you know, the impact of the investments that are needed uh, to move from so-called Thailand 3.0 to Thailand 4.0 or 5.0, um, uh, there will be significant investment that, that will be required. Uh, if you imagine, for example, the automobile sector, uh, mm. we, will, will, we will need to completely revamp uh, our automobile industry. Uh, every Thai uh, mm. will, will basically be, be needing to uh, replenish or replace uh, existing uh, petrol-driven cars with uh, with EVs in the future. Uh, this implies significant investment, uh, huge boost potentially to GDP, um, refitting all the petrol stations so that they become uh, EV uh, charging stations. Yeah. Uh, all, all these are examples of the kind of investments that will mm. be required uh, during the transformation period, and all of which uh, are important not only for future productivity, future efficiency, but for uh, current uh, and immediate uh, economic growth. So yes, big impact. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nina, you have a question? Mm -hmm. But from all of this that you say, do you think that Thailand is really for this digital transformation? Uh, do, you, do I think Thailand is really what? Is ready for this digital transformation? I, I tell you, we're it's not only a matter of readiness. If we're not ready, we have to get ourselves ready. It's an absolute necessity. What I'm trying to say is, unless we do this, uh, we will lose competitiveness. Uh, in fact, I go as far as saying we'll lose our sovereignty. We'll lose our economic sovereignty. Already what has happened in the past several years, we've all been, uh, we, you know, you're all t talking about trading on crypto exchanges. We've also also been buying things online, especially during the COVID uh, period when we were all cooped up at home. Um, every transaction we've made has been enriching foreign international economic platforms, tech, tech, uh, tech platforms. Every time we watch Netflix, uh, every time we order something from Amazon or from Shopee, uh, these are income and most importantly, data uh, that effectively is leaking uh, to platforms that are all foreign-owned. 
Um, so we're losing our sovereignty because today these foreign platforms know more about Thais and their shopping habits, their living habits, what we even think, what we do every day, where we go every day. They know more about us than any Thai organization and certainly more, know more about us than the Thai government. Uh, so it is a matter of sovereignty. And in, in, unless we are able to develop our own platforms, unless we are able to uh, develop our, our, our own uh, technological path, we will just be uh, effectively a colony. Um, mm. uh, and, and, and really, the issue of sovereignty, of sovereignty is, is real. So, as I said, um, if we're not ready, we need to get ourselves ready. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not an option. And the first thing we need to do uh, yes. in order to get ourselves ready is that we need to make sure that our, our leaders, that the government leadership understand this challenge, uh, understand also the opportunities um, and know how to go about doing it. Uh, so I, if, if, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely confident that, that they do at the moment. The fact that they can come up with issues like uh, capital gains tax on, on cryptocurrencies without having thought this through at all, it, it seems is indicative of the fact that I don't think they fully understand what is at stake here. Um, but the first thing we need to do is make sure uh, that we have a leadership that, that understands this mm. uh, and also understands that amidst the technological, technological change, uh, the physical world will still continue to exist and thrive. People mm. still need to eat, uh, yeah. even in the metaverse. You know, they, they, they can't eat avatars, they need to eat real food. Um, and, you know, we are leaders of, of uh, the production of, of much that is physical. Um, and we need to learn how to use technology to improve the way we work in the physical world uh, in order to uh, give ourselves the best opportunities of generating the kind of uh, income, livelihood, and quality of life that uh, all Thais can have. Mm -hmm. Before we're going to talk about Pakla a little bit, um, mm -hmm. let's talk about the last question about digital transformation. So what are the last trends in this digital transformation? You mentioned about metaverse earlier. So anything that yeah. we should keep an eye on? Well, um, you know, the, the, the previous big trend was obviously the mm -hmm. internet technology. Um, but with internet technology, we found that uh, information was everywhere uh, and we were being overwhelmed. And that led to the development platforms uh, so that uh, technology, uh, sorry, information is more focused uh, in, in the aggregator, which is the platform. So uh, from, from here on, people are beginning to think, yeah, okay, platform's good, uh, but uh, I, I don't own my own data. Um, one of the biggest issues with Facebook, for example, is that Facebook owns all my data uh, and they make money, a lot of money from it. Uh, why can't I get a share uh, of the money they make? Because it's, it's my data that they're using to sell adver ad 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 advertisements. Um, so people are beginning to ask this kind of question, which is why uh, everybody really likes the concept of, uh, of, of blockchain, uh, because with blockchain, uh, and uh, decentralization of everything, whether it's money through crypto or finance through DeFi, uh, people begin to feel that once again on the internet world, on the digital world, uh, we, we are taking back ownership uh, of our own, own data. So blockchain, I think it's, uh, is already uh, a, an important technology, uh, but, but there are others. Um, augmented intelligence, AI, uh, is going to be is already huge. It's going to be e e even bigger. Um, robotics, and um, and of course, uh, leading all of that to uh, the creation of things like metaverse. Now, metaverse, in my opinion, I'm only beginning to to sort of understand what it might might mean. Mm -hmm. And um, and if I if, if if my understanding is correct, it, it will be huge. It will be huge. Um, people of my generation. Uh, we, we think there's no way we're going to spend all our day in the, in the metaverse. But, you know, I think back, let's say, 50, 60 years ago, let's say, um, if, you'd, if, if, if you'd said to uh, people then that in 50 or 60 years' time, you know, uh, the, the world population was spending five, six, seven, eight hours a day in front of a, of a box that we know, we, we know as TV, 
or even the laptop. What what is people TV? Think it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, people would think it's crazy. Who's going to sit in front of a box for eight hours a day? You know, um, we go we go out and take walks in the countryside or right. or, 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 or whatever, breathe fresh air. But it's become normal for us, right? Um, we 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 don't think twice about it. So for me to think, oh, who's going to spend all that time in the metaverse? Um, uh, well, that that's me with my accumulated experiences thinking, but it will it is already frankly second nature to my son um you know uh if, if, if i was to ask him which world is real for him you know uh the, 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 his world uh in his games or his world with me um in the outside world he said yeah dad they're about about the same you know and, sorry uh, what how old is so he sorry he's uh Your son. 20 22 20, 22 yeah so and you know he's doing data, he's doing computer science uh, in his final year at university. So he's very you know he he we talked about the metaverse about a year ago, um, and um, and we 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 talk about NFTs and how that might be applied to the metaverse, and um, uh, you know he I think these things are just more he's much more native to it, more mm. natural to it, and um, and I think. Uh, yeah, he, he he no longer sees the point of many things um, that that I, I I take for granted as uh, as being normal, and um, so I, I think technology like uh, or changes developments like, such as the metaverse is going to be very important. It's very interesting if I if I may add to this. Uh, mm-hmm. I really I'm one of these millions of people who really enjoy Squid Game, and, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, me being me, uh, I wasn't content with just enjoying uh, the series i wanted to know know about know more about the background and the and the the business behind it mm-hmm. and um it was very interesting for me to learn that uh, obviously the the, uh, the the attitude of the south koreans uh, is of course they're very proud of this you know they they created a, a global phenomenon uh, but they're very aware uh, that most of the money is not made made by them the mm-hmm. the, the company that produced we came was contracted by netflix Mm-hmm. and made only 15 percent over cost uh, the bulk of the economic benefit derived from squid game is obviously derived by owner of the platform which is netflix and netflix uh estimated separately that they think they made economic value of over a billion dollars uh from from squid game uh, many many times more than the south koreans uh earned uh from 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 this series so that got the south korean thinking if you look at their last, latest budget, uh, the government has uh, agreed uh, to put up substantial amount of money to support an initiative um, of more than 200 uh, South Korean companies and government agencies who have combined uh, to, to create a metaverse strategy for mm-hmm. South Korea. Because they realize they, that they, they need, uh, unless they have a platform, of their own, uh, they will suffer what I just mentioned earlier mm. uh, about uh, a loss of sovereignty and a loss of competitiveness. They will, they will, they feel that it's all very well creating the world's best content, but unless we own the platform, we're never going to make any real money uh, mm-hmm. from that content. And from their perspective, they can't compete in the, with the existing technology against existing platforms. But with the metaverse, it's all just the beginning. Um, let's make sure that. Uh, we we have a you know a, a piece of that um, when when the technology tra- takes off. So that's what they're already thinking, and um, and that's what we should be thinking too. Think ahead uh, mm. to the next game, and the next game uh, could very well be the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's talk about Gla Party. It's a <laughs> very new party. So as a yeah. Gla Party founder and that's leader, what? Oh, can I see again? Yeah, it's um, it's a hand. It's basically, uh, that's right. It's a it's a, it's a fist, but also designed um, to look like a light bulb. And um, yeah, exactly. So yeah, so the the fist signifies uh, our uh, our sense that you know people need to 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 you know use get their hand use their hand to get things done. Uh, basically, mm-hmm. it signifies getting things done rather than just talking and thinking. Uh, that because, you know, right well? enough enough people doing that and the light bulb is just to signify uh 
you know, what is obvious. Um, that we want to shine light, uh, improve uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the the political uh, the political scene. Uh, we think there's been a big deterioration in the quality of politicians and political discourse. Uh, I think this is holding holding Thailand back, and we're mm -hmm. hoping to do our bit in. Um, in shining light uh, on uh, the, the political scene in, in Thailand and, and mm. leading to some kind of improvement. Mm. So as a Dla Party founder and leader, what is mm. the most challenging mm. for election campaign for online and offline <laughs> in this era? Uh, I tell you what's most challenging. Most yeah. challenging is competing against competitors who don't play by the rules. Mm. Uh, I'm, Excuse I'm competing me, like at the what? <laughs> Don't play by the rules. The most obvious, the, the most obvious one of all is uh, substantial, mm. and in uh, substantial and in, in historically, uh, mm -hmm. in in terms of history, uh, the, the biggest amount of uh, uh, employment of the use of vote buying uh, that mm. exists in the Thai political uh, competitive scene today. I'm actually mm -hmm. we're, we're completing in um, uh, in three by elections uh, concurrently, uh, one in Songkha, one in Chumphon, and one ongoing in uh, in Bangkok, uh, mm -hmm. Laksi and Chatuchak. Mm -hmm. And um, in the south, in particular, uh, in these two provinces, there's just a huge amount of money uh, that is uh, uh, being used uh, effectively uh, to, to to buy votes, and that's that's very hard uh, to. Uh, compete against um, and it, it's a it's a big drawback for the future of Thai democracy uh, unless the people stand mm -hmm. up to that or unless we have a system and a process uh, that makes it more difficult uh, for votes to be uh, bought and sold I think it's going to be continue to be very challenging for for Thailand and and that's that's very sad uh, I'm fighting mm -hmm. hard uh, so um, yeah, there are enough people out there who want to see political change. There are enough people out there who who want to basically support uh, fresh young candidates with with ideas who, who are willing to uh, you know sacrifice uh, their time uh, for, uh, for for public works. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully we can uh, we can um, address enough of them. Uh, in in order to get sufficient support for us to be represented in in parliament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, campaign. What what about offline? What about <laughs> the battlefield for online? Well, well okay. Well, uh, my vote buying is very much offline. Uh, they're not using cryptos yet. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, online, it's uh, it's always a challenge because the you know ten years ago I was the mm -hmm. first. Believe it or not. Uh, I think I was, I was literally the first Thai politician to use Facebook. So that was about 12 years ago when I was in the Ministry, right, right. Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. And I used to get very excited uh, when you know, I had about 25 people press, uh, liking whatever <laughs> I posted. Uh, now, you know, unless 2,500 is, 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 is fairly normal, um, 25,000 even sometimes uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, is something that we consider a, a, a success. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the space has grown, um, the competition uh, for attention uh, mm -hmm. on social media uh, is, is, is much bigger um, than it used to be. The algorithms are changing every day. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So we, we, we have to work out, you know, what, what, what's the best way of um, addressing uh, our target audience. Uh, it's still an amazing tool. Um, but I think it, it developed sufficiently from, from where it was at the beginning, uh, only about 10 years ago. I remember 10 years ago thinking, uh, this is the best thing uh, ever, because it meant that I could uh, bypass uh, the, the usual gatekeeper, which is the, the press, the media. Uh, in the old days, if I wanted mm -hmm. to send any message out to uh, my supporters or to, the, or to the general public, I would need to go through the media who if they didn't like what I had to say, they may not report it at all, or they, mm -hmm. re they may report it in, in, in bits and in parts that don't capture the whole uh, of the message. I, I can't contact, um, control the content at all um, in the old world, but with the advent of social media, I could address uh, the, the, the public directly. Uh, I could control 
in entirety every single word of what I wanted to say. Um, and I felt that this was, this was great. Um, but what's happened uh, mm -hmm. since then, of course, uh, is, is, is the flood of, of, of flow of information. And because there's no gatekeeper, it means there's nobody who is sorting out what is real and what is not real. Mm -hmm. and, and the general public, therefore, is, is, is flooded with uh, information from all, all sides. Uh, and they don't have the tools to be able to decide um, what to believe in and what is fake. And, and that is, frankly, very challenging and, mm -hmm. and very dangerous. Uh, so the media, in my opinion, still have uh, a very important role uh, as gatekeeper uh, in deciding, first of all, what is important, what is not, and, and also what is real and what is fake. And um, in the media, uh, the nation uh, in particular, um, has, has been doing a good job of that and should, con should continue to do so. Thanks a lot. I wish to be there too because the nation has been with the people and also I wish you very successful for the Patra and also the winning to come. Okay, thanks a lot for, appreciate that. for joining you. us today. We hope to see you All again. Right. Okay, enjoy very much. Thank you. Thank you. Wadi Kap. Wadi Kap.